Hello everybody and welcome back to Nintendo Week where we are discussing the Nintendo Direct for April 1st, 2015. I'm your host Colin McIsaac and I'm joined by Alex Plant. Coming directly to you. Ben LeMoreau. Hey, what's going on? So, Nintendo Direct today. Uh, the biggest stories I would say to come from it are uh, Mewtwo is coming back on April 15th. We already uh, talked about that. He's got his Melee move set, so if you guys were looking for a, a new fighter... Unfortunately, he's still got the melee move set. I personally really like the, that move set, though. But uh, but he does get a final smash, so that's a new move. He does. Uh, the final smash is Mega Mewtwo Y, and it looks like it looks like that's going to be an attack rather than a transformation like Lucario and Charizard have, uh, which I think is nice because we have a lot of transformation final smashes. So that's on April fifteenth for those of you who registered on Club Nintendo. April twenty eighth, if you did not. Available for $4.99 for both versions, or uh, if you only have one version of the game, uh, it's $3.99. But you could also probably buy the $4.99 one and just not use the code. Or sell it to a friend for well, like two bucks. Exactly, exactly. Yep. That's, yeah, not using the code wouldn't make sense. I don't know why I said that. That's not even what I meant. <laughs> we don't <laughs> actually endorse that, though. Let's just make that clear. Since the Nintendo ninjas are listening. Cough, cough. Yes, Alex doesn't endorse that. <laughs> Colin may or may not endorse it. I make no comments. But, um, so... But Mewtwo is not the only DLC character, uh, as many were led to believe a couple months ago. But uh, Lucas is also returning as a fighter, and he's coming in June. Uh, we don't have an exact release date for that yet. We don't have a price, but uh, he does have the same moveset as from Brawl, so that's something else to look forward to. Did we get to see his final smash? No, but I'm assuming it's the same one as Brawl. I'd expect it's the same, because the rest of his moveset's the same. That or it's changed kind of like to be a clone of Ness's current one, but I think it would just be the same. That's not all for new characters, though. They are going to be doing a lot more character DLC, and what's going to blow some of your minds and make you super happy um, is that they opened a poll where you can request characters directly to Nintendo. Directly to Nintendo, Iwata said. (laughs) Um, So, you know, you, you can go in and suggest your own. I've already put in a handful. I don't know about you guys, but I already threw in, like, Shovel Knight and Isaac and Roy and Waluigi and... Gear him and Paper Mario. And... What, only those? <laughs> well, I also did a few more, but I don't remember some of them right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give it some serious thought before I actually pitch one in, uh, or a few in, or like a dozen in. Because um, at this point, it's really necessary that the, the, the ones they do include really have that that massive impact, uh, especially if it's going to be right. the one that their fans are requesting. So Right, well, I figure um, the, the more you put in, like if... A lot of fans are going to be requesting like certain characters. You might they're probably just going to go based on what characters are getting the highest number of requests. So, it, if there's a character that you want, it no matter whether or not you think they ultimately should put them in, I think it certainly helps to uh, get that visibility. Like I requested Banjo and Kazooie. I know that's never going to happen, but just on you know the crazy hope that if enough people do. Maybe Nintendo would be willing to pursue that. See, I'd make fun of you, but I voted Libertarian, so. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I'm going to take some real pride in my submissions and really want yeah, them to be the ones that I don't pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Colin has no pride, so. <laughs> <laughs> we already knew that. I just throw all the ones that I want in and just let them do whatever. So this is really exciting for me because this is the first time that it, it really looks like Nintendo, outside of Hyrule Warriors, I would say, that Nintendo is really committing to, like, extensive long-term support in terms of DLC for a game. Because, you know, it took them months just to do Mewtwo and Lucas. So if they're opening up requests for multiple new characters, I mean, I think we can expect regular updates for a while. And again, this this goes back to what I said about Splatoon earlier, where it's going to be really key for Nintendo to keep supporting these online-heavy Wii U games after their next console comes out. Right. But also, what better game to introduce, like, all this DLC for than Smash Bros.? I mean, it's their perfect... They're perfect DLC model right here. Absolutely. It's it's the dream come true for Smash fans, yeah. honestly. Or the Nintendo fans, period, because it's just such this broad, all-inclusive franchise. Right. There's even more. There's a new balance patch coming. I believe that's on April 15th alongside Mewtwo, which introduces the Miiverse stage finally. No, no news on tournament mode yet. That April 15th update also introduces tons of new Mii costumes. Uh, They've got a bunch based on, like, pre-existing characters. So you've got Link costumes, Dunban from Xenoblade, Mega Man X, Proto Man, um, Majora's Mask. There are some really cool new additions. And also, uh, that will be the update where you can finally share images and stages and stuff with your friends on your Wii U friend list. 
More Smash news. Uh, more waves of Amiibo were announced for the Smash Bros. line. Jigglypuff and Greninja, it looks like, are both coming to Wave 4. It's not really clear whether they're going to be added to Wave 4 or whether they're a different wave that's, that's also in May. Looks like they're going to be added to Wave 4. So for all intents and purposes, Wave 5 is what we're going to call this next one. Wave 5 is in July. That's just Dark Pit and Palutena. And Wave 6 is in September with Olimar, Bowser Jr., Dr. Mario, Zero Suit Samus, and Ganondorf. Yeah, my wife has made it a requirement for me to get Palutena, so I'm going <laughs> to actually have to pay attention because those will probably go like before I can even think about it. Well, you know, they have They're to make them by gone, hand, Alex. so <laughs> You're too all late. six of them. In addition, Mewtwo and Lucas will both get Amiibo, so there was a lot of you know uncertainty over whether DLC characters like Mewtwo would get Amiibo or whether they would be uh, left out. Um, I think it makes sense that they're getting Amiibo because it would be weird to have just a couple characters on the roster who just never get the same figure player support because Amiibo is really something in Smash Bros that thrives on having like any character that you want. So I think it makes sense to add them. It's sort of nuts how uh, protracted this release schedule is for the Amiibo because you've got uh, Wave 6 coming in, what, September? Mm-hmm. So the Lucas and, and Mewtwo would have to come after that. So that could be November. That'd be like a year after launch that they're still releasing new Amiibo for Smash. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, after Wave 6, they still will only have, what, 35 or 40 that yeah. launched. And there are f- going to be at least 52 characters now with Lucas and, and Mewtwo. Well, p- plus at least one more for the uh, player requested ones. Yeah. And that and that's not even going to be decided. They're not even closing the poll till like October. Yeah. Oh, did they announce that they're closing the poll? I think I think they had a they set a close date. I think it was October. Okay, so I will be sure to spam Waluigi as much as I can. <laughs> Let me see if King I can K. Roll too. That. Oh yeah, K. Roll. The uh, the deadline is the third of October, so the first oh. anniversary of the 3DS games release. Okay, so that means okay. it'll be a while before it comes. So out. be sure to spam your King K. Roll suggestions too. Yes, yes. <laughs> and Reggie Fizamek and uh, non-specific action figure. Oh, I forgot about him. I need to. I need to enter him. I yeah. would be so happy for a non-specific action figure amiibo. Let's get that out of the way. How cool would that be? <laughs> <laughs> what would his final smash be like? Approving. He would oh, just approve. Yeah. He would just approve. Yeah, he would approve. <laughs> so Nintendo has announced Amiibo Tap, which is a game that samples Nintendo's greatest hits from the Virtual Console. We talked about this on the show actually before. Uh, they hadn't really announced the game yet at that point, but we knew the premise of it. Uh, it's you scan your amiibo, you get a three minute demo of a virtual console game. And those virtual console games, every time you scan your amiibo, it takes you to a new scene. So you can play demos, it looks like as many times as you want, and you can play demos of different parts of the game. But the really weird thing about this is it doesn't work based on like what amiibo you scan. So like Mario won't unlock a certain game. What it does is any amiibo that you scan will unlock like a random thing like a, a random game. So so one person's Mario Amiibo could unlock Super Mario World and another person's Mario Amiibo could unlock Metroid. And it's just, it appears to be random. Iwata quoted Forrest Gump to describe it. <laughs> he said, you never know what you're going to get. He said, it's like Amiibo Tap is a box of chocolates. <laughs> so each each individual Amiibo though, they'll only unlock one game, right? But the game's right. random. That's what it sounds like, yeah. That's right. I gotta say, that's kind of stupid, because you can end up with multiple, yeah. like, demos for the same game, and, you know... You, it's you it's like specifically... taking the horrible unlock philosophy of Smash Bros.'s custom moves and putting it, putting them onto an Amiibo game. Well, right. and the really depressing thing is I'm pretty sure there was a case where a developer wanted to do DLC that kind of worked this way, and Nintendo vetoed the idea, because they wanted to... It's popular in Japan for DLC to be distributed in, like, a pachinko fashion, where you don't really know what you're going to get. You'll you'll just pay five dollars and you'll get a random item, and that's exactly what they're doing with this amiibo. And tap people thing. do that. Yeah, people buy into it, and, and and Nintendo's always been steadfast about that being a bad business practice, and yet here they are, and they're attaching it to a merchandising scheme, no less. So it's like they're taking this already kind of bad idea that they themselves said was bad, that they themselves have said was bad, adding it to another bad idea, which is you're really just getting a demo. Uh, is is Amiibo Tap uh, a free app or? Yes, it's a free, it's a free app. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's not so bad then. Oh no, no, it's still bad <laughs> because the Amiibo aren't free. Right, but I mean, you're not buying the Amiibo exclusively for Amiibo Tap. It's kind of like an extra bonus. It's just a crappy bonus. It is a really crappy bonus. Now I will say it would still be nice, and they haven't said anything about this yet. But it'd still be nice if they, in some way, attach some kind of discount 
to this amiibo tap thing. It doesn't seem very likely at this point. Mario Maker is now coming this September. It's been delayed yet again. I'm really hoping that that means there are some really great new features coming to it because honestly, it seemed like it was pretty damn near complete at E3 last year, especially if they had decided to release it as a service rather than a single standalone game. I found it interesting that in the trailer, when they showed off uh, what it's like to share levels, the interface showed the player's uh, catalog of levels. There was a, ca- or a row labeled World 1 and a row labeled World 2. So I'm wondering if they've kind of engineered it so that you can string levels together to make a complete custom Mario game. Didn't we talk Maybe. about th- I think they said that they would do that. We talked about did something they, like this on the show before. Did they confirm it? I don't, I don't really know. I don't know, I don't know if talked Nintendo about something like this on the show that, before. But I think it sounds so insane. I'm, I'm sure we've said it's sure something we speculated. Wanted. But it was yeah, interesting maybe. to see that uh, tangibly. I don't know yeah. if that'll amount to anything, but it was a cool observation. They're also planning more stuff for the 30th anniversary of Mario. They didn't announce anything, but I'm kind of wondering what that might be. We'll get a Mario Symphony tour across the world. Honestly, I would love that. Oh. <laughs> I would love that. Jaren, are you listening? Yeah, Jaren, get on it. Uh, yeah, you were talking about Super Mario Galaxy 3 earlier, and uh, it's the 30th anniversary, so, you know, play on the threes. I don't know. Half-Life 3 confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> they also showed off Yoshi's Willy World, um, and it has these two these two game modes. One is a classic mode that's, you know, classic, like, Yoshi kind of style difficulty gameplay, and another is a uh, mellow mode which will give Yoshi wings that he can use to just like sort of float around all the stages to make it a lot easier for more casual players. Um, So a lot of people were like wondering whether Yarn Yoshi would be as laid back and easy as Kirby's Epic Yarn. Classic mode, it looks like, will not, but Mellow mode will be easy in a totally different way. What do you guys think about Mellow mode? Well, I think this is a game that's clearly geared towards younger audiences, so... I can see them sort of, you know, including a super easy mode, essentially. So you can just enjoy all the, you know, cute graphics and all the fun things in the game without actually being challenged by it. Uh, They definitely correctly named the modes. Uh, Classic Mm -hmm. mode is always a good name for a mode. And uh, I like like mellow mode. It has a nice ring to it. Yeah, it's very mellow. Uh, And I don't know if you guys have seen the box art, but the box art is freaking adorable. Oh, I didn't. Uh, Poochie is on the box art. Uh, really? baby, ba- baby Bowser is actually on the box. We chart. didn't even know that these characters were going to be in the game. Yeah, that's and they, they they haven't talked about them, but but there they are. I'm surprised there's a box art already, given that the game's coming out in fall. Yeah. Oh, we we should post this. We haven't posted this on Gamnesia yet. <laughs> well, we're breaking it first on the podcast. I don't Ooh. know. Uh, so in addition, Nintendo is making specific amiibo for Yoshi's Woolly World, but get this, they're not statues. They're plushies. They're like little Yoshi. They're they're yarn Yoshis. They're adorable. Like, actually made of yarn. They're so cute. I'm and, actually uh, gonna amiibo. buy all of them. Me too. On a- yeah. <laughs> like I love these like little plush animal things. I would have bought those things as merchandise if they weren't amiibo. Um, and now they're amiibo. That's fantastic. So there, there's a green one, a pink one, and a blue one. Weirdly enough, there's not a red one even though red is the color of the co-op Yoshi in Yoshi's Woolly World. But yeah. Whatever. But what the amiibo does in Yoshi's Woolly World, and it's unclear yet whether it will function differently from the Yoshi statues or whether it has a specific yarn Yoshi chip, but what it does in Yoshi's Woolly World is it gets you a second Yoshi so that you can effectively play co-op mode with just one player. So if you have no friends, then your stuffed animal can be your friend. In the game. Or if you have plenty of friends, but just none of them care to come to your house to play freaking Yoshi, which I'm sure is the case with even most people who have friends. <laughs> Cause... What, you don't throw Yoshi parties? <laughs> so you can effectively just do all the things that you normally could only do in co-op with just one player, which I think is a smart way to make every bit of the game more accessible to people who generally don't go out of their way to throw Yoshi parties. <laughs> um, and I do think they, they managed to pull it off in an interesting way, too. It's not just a, a flat copy of the co-op functionality. It works basically like the double cherry from uh, from 3D World. Does it? It didn't look like it did. Yeah, it looks like you move them. You don't move them independently. You move them together. Oh, um, I th- there was some stuff where like one of them was ro- rolled into a ball and stuff. I don't know. I forget exactly what it 
they had to do to trigger that, but it looked like when they were separated, uh, like there was a part where he spit his second one up on top of a second ledge. Uh, mm-hmm. As he moved his original character, the other one moved along with oh, it. Oh, interesting. So that could that could it's basically a new game mechanic into itself. It's really it's not just a, a holdover of the co-op mode uh, in single player. So Splatoon launches on May 29th, and it is getting its own amiibo lineup. There is an Inkling girl, an Inkling boy, and a green Inkling squid. Um, you can buy these as a three pack on May 29th, the same day that the game comes out, or you can buy the boy and girl and in both separate. Uh, amiibo boxes let's be realistic you won't buy them may 29th you'll pre-order them before they run out yeah (laughs) (laughs) so amiibo will uh, provide missions and exclusive gear for your characters when you use them in the game what we don't know yet is whether other amiibo that aren't uh from the splatoon series will work in splatoon i personally hope they will you know unlock they could unlock some cool costume stuff so that that would be really exciting to me if you could get like donkey kong's tie or something neat like that (laughs) <laughs> it's an oddly specific item everyone needs a donkey kong tie well yeah i mean the classy kids do uh, uh but you know like toad's hat and like you know mario clothes and like a peach dress or whatever but anyway even more importantly though i really hope that what they do is the mario amiibo unlocks flood as a weapon yeah that would be pretty cool that would be pretty cool yeah um, <laughs> cool i will say i'm pretty happy with the uh the implementation this time which i can't say for most other games that use amiibo um i like that they they haven't just given you costumes for f- like as an unlock you have to actually uh, go through these missions to get them uh, they don't automatically get added to your inventory or something mm-hmm. uh and that means that they're actually adding content to your game they're not just adding a costume uh it's a little more meaningful in my opinion right. I'm sure plenty of people, though, would, would go the opposite route and say they're locking content behind Amiibo, which isn't cool. And I, I can see both both sides of the coin. I mean, yeah, it's a fair argument, but uh, you know, I don't think this game was necessarily designed around these missions necessarily either. Right. So. right. so Nintendo has officially unveiled Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem. It was confirmed back in January 2013, I think it was. Yeah. A ton of people had thought that it was canceled, uh, but no, they revealed it and uh, it's looking pretty cool. Uh, the basic premise is it takes place in like a real world everyday setting. There are characters who like go to school and stuff. Um, <laughs> it sounds like a persona thought, game. <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't play persona. I don't, but the twist is that behind this real world, coexists a fantasy world where there are i guess the fantasy world is where all the swords and stuff come come into play and the pegasus pegasi and stuff they said there were going to be fire emblem characters they're sort of fire emblem fire characters emblem. they're like you fire emblem s- style fire well emblem there are some characters. characters that are obviously very closely based on fire emblem characters right. if you look really closely i can't name any of them off the top of my head but they they i did recognize their their faces um they've been transformed into characters that fit this world though they're not like direct uh, direct cameos uh, like you'd expect from from, from crossover. traditional crossover games. Yeah, right. Yeah, no. I was expecting something more like the original trailer showed off a bunch of Persona characters or Shin Megami Tensei. Sorry, yeah, and a bunch yeah. of uh, Fire Emblem characters. I was expecting something more along those lines, um, as opposed to you know basically an all new story. Yeah, and I think that's the really impressive thing about this uh, being a crossover that they've kind of pushed they're pushing kind of a really original concept. They're not pushing this right. somehow this this merger of of the two uh, where right. there there's obvious fire emblem elements and there's obvious Shimagami Tensei elements. Right. And I think that may be part of why it's taken so long to be able to show off is because um I think they probably in development went through a lot of back and forth over whether they should you know, do something more like a traditional crossover and, and where they should draw the line between a crossover and original content. I think they ultimately obviously settled on a heavily original game. But Yeah. And it, this game, I wouldn't have thought it would be my style. And it and and the, the J-pop trailer like, didn't reinforce that at, or didn't uh, combat that opinion at all. But, but I like the concept that they're running with. I like the fantasy world meshing with the real world uh, aesthetic. Yeah. I like the way... I like the way it looks visually. Uh, it's, it's, it, I was blown away, and I wasn't expecting to be. Yeah, very cool. Um, so a new update is coming to Codename Steam that lets you speed up alien turns. And that doesn't sound like it's that exciting. But I don't know if any of you listening have played Codename Steam. I don't know if, if either of you two have played Codename Steam. But from what I've played of Codename Steam, the alien turns take forever. They take at least two minutes at a time. 
half the time you can't see what's happening. So you're just waiting for what seems like nothing. But now you can finally fast forward through alien turns, which honestly for me brings the game score up from like a six to like an 8.5, just with that one change. So yeah. I'm really excited. Yeah, I played the demo and I, I'd have the same opinion. I mean, I, I don't really know how long that grates on you after several hours of playing. Quite a but, bit. Uh, um, it was pretty it nuts. Really screwed well, yeah, up you're right. Tempo. You can't you can't see half the action because right. it really just screwed up the tempo. I felt honestly like playing was more of a chore than it was um, an actually fun experience. Uh, and it was 100 percent of the blame was on the alien turns. Every time yeah. that I was playing, I was I was thinking this game is so much fun. I wish that less than 60% of it was just sitting with my 3DS on my desk and doing something else. Because that's what <laughs> yeah. 60% of it was. Yeah. I haven't played the demo yet, but I am ridiculously impatient, so I know I would just I would not be able to put up with that the way <laughs> yeah. it was. But now that now that this update's here, I'm really excited. It turns Codename Steam into a a fantastic, fantastic new addition to Nintendo's lineup. So Kudos. Fire Emblem If got a new trailer here. Uh, we don't know that that's the name of the new Fire Emblem game coming to 3DS in America, but at least in Japan, it's called Fire Emblem If. Fire Emblem If has two main stories and you can choose which one you want to pursue. So there's the basic premise is that there are these two kingdoms at war and your avatar character, uh, now instead of being a sort of companion to the, the protagonist, your avatar is the protagonist. So your character was born to the Hoshido kingdom. Uh, but he was raised by the Nor Kingdom. So he's Loki. The Hoshido Kingdom is white, uh, yeah, <laughs> and the Nor Kingdom is black. I realize now that that sounds like I'm talking about race, but I just mean the way they presented it in the trailer. Nintendo made the good guys white and the bad guys black, not well, us. Well, they're not explicitly the good guys. They're well, pretty. I mean... They're pretty heavily implied to be the good guys. The Hoshido, the the white ones, are the um, the peace loving kingdom. And the Nor is the glory-loving kingdom. And it seems kind of like the Nor will just do whatever they want to get glory. And uh, so the, the storyline that your avatar is faced with is which side uh, to fight for. Will you, will you, the player, choose loyalty or uh, blood? Obviously, it depends, you know, what kind of story you're planning to experience. But it changes a ton of outcomes in the game. It really makes it a much, much richer experience. So that's that's all really fascinating to me. Uh, and the stories are actually, they end up being so different that Fire Emblem If is releasing as a black version and white version in Japan. Uh, kind of like a Pokemon kind of thing. Exactly like a Pokemon kind of thing. Well, well not quite. I won't, I won't say exactly because Pokemon technically... Pokemon has like version exclusive Pokemon. Fire Emblem If has different stories. Yeah. I meant by the names. <laughs> okay. Well. Uh, yeah, well, true. Fire Emblem uh, If white version 2. They will allow you, <laughs> however, if you buy one version, you can download the uh, story content from the other version. Oh, uh, that's nice. For free? It seems like, not for free, no. Oh. Uh, it's, it'll be about half the price of the full game. So, and it, it winds up being that uh, that you're basically paying like 1.5 times the price for the uh But us story. in America get to pay just one time. Yeah, if we're lucky. Ha 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 ha. Uh, and they're also actually uh, planning to release a third scenario. We don't know if that'll be a continuation of these first two or an, another alternate, uh, but they'll be releasing a third scenario as well. So a new Animal Crossing game is also coming to 3DS. It's called Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. And it's not like a traditional Animal Crossing game where, uh, you know, it's focused on townskeeping and towns building. Uh, it's focused instead on interior design. So you are going to uh, design homes for these characters. Uh, your other villagers will say like, I am this kind of person or I am this kind of dog or whatever. Um, and so then your job is to build a nice house for them. I don't really have much to say on this. I don't know if you guys it's do. A, it's a giant amiibo scheme. Because uh, it seems to me, based on what we saw, that the only way you get a character to design for it is if you scan in an amiibo card. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's... Uh, I think it's free to download. Oh, is that really how they um, work? Yeah, that's how... That seems to be how it works. Oh. So I'm a little skeptical, uh, but uh, I, I do like the idea of a f Animal Crossing game that's entirely focused on the cool stuff, which is the stuff you get to put in your house. But uh, it, it's like a money scheme, uh, which, I mean, I guess that's what we should expect in the era of Nintendo DLC and Amiibo, but... All of a sudden, this has gotten so much more negative. <laughs> 
So alongside Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, uh, the Amiibo scanner for the original 3DS model is coming this fall. So that's basically an NFC stand that you can uh, connect to your original model 3DS or original XL uh, to scan Amiibo or Amiibo cards, which are launching alongside Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer uh, or the Yarn Yoshi thing. Uh, which is an amiibo plushie. An adorable amiibo plushie. Three adorable, adorable amiibo plushies. Uh, Mario Kart 8's second DLC pack is launching on April 23rd. So it's not launching in May anymore. It's actually launching this month. It includes Villager and Isabel and Dry Bowser as characters. It includes four new vehicles, eight new courses. Of those new courses, they only showed off one in tonight's trailer. And that's the Animal Crossing course, which this time changes from season to season, which is a pretty nice touch. Um, you go, you know, over, you know, through the town and through the plaza and across the beach. It looks pretty fun. I was going to say Nintendo paid a lot of attention to the music for this track. Uh, they recorded it live in studio. They'll be released. They've released a, a special video that focuses on the track and it, and it actually sounds really nice. Uh, so check that out. Well, they actually, they do that for all the tracks, which I really appreciate because I really love music. So this isn't something new, but it's still something amazing. It's uh, worth and pointing I really out, like, definitely. Yeah, and I really like the New Leaf theme, too, so I, I like this new remix that they did for the track. Also coming uh, in the Mario Kart 8 update, which the update is for free, the DLC pack is not for free. They're coming on the same day, though, April 23rd. Also coming in the update is a ton of new amiibo costumes. So we've got Sonic, Mega Man, Pac-Man, Toad, Rosaline and Luma, Wario, and I think I'm missing one, uh, Bowser. So that's really cool. You get some Mega Man costumes and Pac-Man costumes, and you can race as these characters in Mario Kart. That's I think cool it's interesting me. that they chose so many like third-party characters instead of like Nintendo-owned IPs. Well, I think it is interesting, but I also think it's awesome. Because, <laughs> let's be real, Sonic and Mega Man are Nintendo characters. Close enough. Indeed. <laughs> and I think it bodes well for them releasing more costumes for the rest of the Smash lineup, too. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, uh, we also got an uh, Olimar costume. Yeah, that would actually surprise me. That didn't surprise me too much. I think Olimar would be a great like guest character. I think I think the next Mario Kart should have like full fledged guest characters, and they should be like Kirby, Olimar, Rob, because Rob was already in him. But well, I mean, if topic, they're gonna put so... in metal characters, they might as well put in guest characters. And Rob is both. <laughs> yeah, if they're gonna if they're gonna invent new characters, <laughs> um, metal versions of guest characters. Metal baby Doctor Mario. They let babies be doctors. <laughs> He did not go to med school. Uh, I'm really hoping, actually, for palette swaps for more characters in future installments, because uh, I was really kind of disappointed, actually, when it was just Shy Guy and Yoshi, because it seems like more characters could have more interesting costumes rather than having them be have separate we don't DLC need characters. Tanuki Mario and Metal Mario as separate yes, characters. Exactly. We should have, you know, they could Metal be Mario, costumes. Tanuki Mario, Doctor Mario, Cat Mario. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they don't need to take up other slots we could have all the koopalings as different costumes really they should have been costumes in the first place but we're getting too off topic the other the other major thing of the mario kart 8 dlc is a 200 cc mode uh so it's actually i'm sorry not the dlc the 200 cc mode is a free update uh alongside the amiibo costumes which i think is really exciting because i never realized that i wanted this <laughs> but I really, really want this. Yeah, I am super stoked for this because it's going to add like a whole lot of replay value to you know Absolutely. the already existing courses. And especially, can you imagine how nuts Mute City is going to be on 200? Oh, it's going to be with, like, so all insane. those like speed booths. It's going to be wait. so insane. It's funny that you mentioned that because uh, already I've been hearing from people, well, doesn't this completely invalidate any concept of an F Zero on Wii U? And it absolutely actually, does. Actually, I think that it enables them to make an F Zero on Wii U because they'll have introduced so many Mario Kart players to this level of high speed, and now they can graduate to this bigger, better, well, not bigger, better, but better racing game. Alex, you're a genius. But I don't know that Nintendo thinks that way. Because that, that used to be how they worked. They used to make they used to make games like, you know, Mario was the basic side-scroller, and then the experts can play Metroid. Like, that used to be how they operated, and it'd be nice if they operated that way now. Uh, so I hope they, they use this as an opportunity to make an F-Zero, not an excuse not to make one. <laughs> And finally, something that we skipped over uh, accidentally is Nintendo 64 games and Nintendo DS games are both on the virtual console as we speak. Super Mario 64 and what was the DS game? Yoshi's Island Yoshi's DS? Yoshi's Island DS. They were yeah. both released today, right after the Direct, which was pretty cool. I'm sure a lot of people will not be super thrilled that Yoshi's Island DS was the one, 
but I didn't really dislike that game much. That's a ringing endorsement. <laughs> I didn't dislike the game that much. Um, but uh, so we've got a great lineup of titles that's already coming. We've got um, Mario Kart DS, Yoshi's Island DS, Donkey Kong 64, Paper Mario, WarioWare Touched, um, and plenty more that are coming uh, soon. So the way that DS games work on this thing, it's going to be different for each game. So some some games will have the top screen of the DS on the Wii U screen and the touch screen on the gamepad. Some will like some like uh, Yoshi's Island DS. I think they showed it have the gamepad vertical, which seems like it would be really hard to play Yoshi's Island DS that way. It sounded to that me might have been like Yoshi you can. Though. It sounded to me like they're gonna have several configurations to choose yeah, from, that's also, that's, rather than a set one for sense, each game. Uh, that way, you, if say for example, you need to play off TV, you can play off TV. Right. But if you want to use the TV, yeah, you can use the yeah, TV. Yeah, I think that makes sense. That's what I. That's the impression I got yeah. from the video. I was uh, typing so frantically. I, wasn't, I haven't I tested wasn't it really out sure. though yet. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, neither have I. I don't really want to pay. I tried the N64 one because I happen to have Mario 64 on Wii Virtual Console, mm-hmm. and uh, that actually ran really well. Nice. Um, so that kind of invalidates everything we said about them not wanting to put N64 games on Virtual Console because they don't look very good. Yeah, they actually they. It seems like they upscaled really nicely. That's good. I think they're just. I think they're just running in 480p. Uh, but, it also uh, invalidates. Well, it doesn't invalidate because we said it's up in the air. But uh, what, so we were talking last week or two weeks ago, rather, about Donkey Kong 64 and like revisiting N64 kind of aesthetics for future games. Um, so Donkey Kong 64 is coming to the virtual console. Uh, I bet uh, the guy who asked that question is super happy. Yeah, it's sort of funny that it's coming at the same time that we're talking about a Banjo-Kazooie successor and uh, Microsoft being interested in Rare IP all of a sudden. Uh so maybe Nintendo's kind of shooting back. Yeah. Not that Donkey Kong 64 is the best game to try that with. But <laughs> yeah, I liked it as a kid. I liked it too, but uh, it doesn't Country have 2 the... was better. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's it's not Country the best too. Donkey Kong game. Tropical Freeze is the best Donkey Kong game. Tropical they don't need Freeze, to re-release exactly. anything. They already have it. Um, yes, indeed. <laughs> and that's not sarcasm. Just clearing that up. If anyone thinks that's sarcasm, it's not. Go buy Tropical Freeze. Awesome game. I would say probably one of the best games on Wii U. Probably one of the best games Nintendo's ever made, honestly. Yeah, I would agree. But lest we turn this into a Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze love fest. So I'm actually really excited for Mario Kart DS because I completely missed out on that uh, during the DS era. I'm not very hopeful that it will be as feature-rich as it probably should be. It'd be nice to have download play, at least, since that should be theoretically possible. And I hear that's one of the best Mario Kart games, so... It's supposed to be, but... Honestly, it's just so... I find it so hard to go back to Mario Kart DS after we've got Wii and 7 and 8. I find it hard to go back to to 64 and Double Dash. Well, it's really, especially but... hard to go back to 64. But yeah. Double Dash, I yeah. can like kind of get a feel for. 64 i think is the one that's it's, aged it's the, the drifting that, that kills it for yeah. me i can't i can't even i can't super switch. mario kart has this kind of like classic vibe and like it's terrible by modern standards but like there's still something charming about it because it's just like oh how cute they tried <laughs> <laughs> well and there's there's cool things that they wouldn't attempt now like you can use the feather to jump the track right and, right and the battle mode is really solid and right. so I'm, I'm stoked for that i'm stoked for paper mario i mean i already have paper mario in like a bazillion different forms but now you can really have it in a bazillion the, really just one. the two but now i'll have another version of it uh because i need that obviously <laughs> i just want it in hd still and this crushed yeah. all my dreams it it does it does they do scale pretty well uh don't 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 be too sad so here's the question guys now that lucas is going to be smash bros dlc will they release mother 3 on the same day I was thinking the same thing, because uh, that's that's a perfect opportunity, especially since it seems like they hadn't put him in in the first place because they hadn't released the game in the West. So the fact that they're adding him back in means that they are acknowledging that he has this following, this global following. Right. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen. I've honestly just lost hope for Mother 3 at this point. But I do think that it is weird that Lucas, of all characters is the one that they chose to bring back. Yeah, they could have done Wolf. They could have done Wolf Roy to the one I was expecting. Fire I know, Wolf because of Star Fox. So, you know, maybe Lucas is coming in June alongside a Mother 3 virtual console release that they announced at E3 2016. That's their big holiday I mean, title now. They want to announce it at E3. But... And Wolf comes alongside Star Fox 64 sometime later in the year. 
I mean, Star Fox Wii U. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I don't think that's likely. Just throwing it out we there. We can drink. We can. So just a quick lightning round of other Nintendo Direct information, because we do that for the news segment. This di- this Direct discussion has been so news heavy. They released an indie sizzle reel that includes a super challenge edition of Mutant Muds. Fatal Frame 5 is coming to North America. They released a video presentation on HAL Lab's new game for 3DS. It's called Box Boy. It's like a puzzle platformer. It looks pretty interesting. Nintendo has announced Pokemon Rumble World, which is a new Rumble game for 3DS. It doesn't look like it is compatible with Amiibo, which is exactly the opposite of what all of us thought the next Rumble game would be. It does look like it's free to play, though. Yeah. With microtransactions and all. Um, So I think we announced it before, but just in case, uh, Puzzle & Dragons Collection launches on May 22nd, if you're at all interested in that. Um, I kind of like hating on Puzzles & Dragons now. It's a Mario RPG where puzzles happen. And dragons. And dragons. And dragons. Nintendo has showed off the Attack on Titan game for 3DS in their presentation. Um, There's an Attack on Titan game for 3DS. It's been out in Japan for like a long time. It's coming west. Street Pass Mi Plaza is getting two new games and a premium subscription service. So those two games, there's a fishing game and a zombie fighting game. Uh, They honestly look a lot better than the past round of Street Pass games that were... uh, released post street pass um but you know you can check out the trailer at gamnesia.com and that's up for you to decide there's also a premium subscription service the pr- subscription service gives you a vip room in your street pass me plaza so you can put uh, special means you can put your friends there um looks kind of neat oh you can also like have birthdays i don't know about you guys it seems kind of like just a way to get more money to me they do really put premium in the name yeah <laughs> so I honestly Being can't really remember about the that. last time I used the Street Pass Me Plaza. It's just like not a part of my 3DS. Not experience. even at E3. Uh, I maybe a totally little bit collect then. puzzle pieces, but that's it. Yeah, a new trailer was released for Xenoblade Chronicles 3D, uh, <laughs> which is like the thousandth trailer we've gotten. The f- the thing I found funniest about that trailer was it seemed like the trailer they used to make up for the fact that they didn't promote this game before. You know, when it released on Wii, uh, I just got that vibe from it. Yeah, I agree. It definitely, you know, it was, like, the story trailer, and it had, like, this, like, this scene of him, like, peering off the cliff to, like, the waterfalls. It and it's very... completely superfluous at this point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think that about covers it now. Oh, real quick. Uh, Nintendo also released a bunch of Mewtwo screenshots for Smash Bros. You can also check those out at Gamnesia. That They're was pretty. after the Direct. They are pretty. Well, any last thoughts, guys? What did you guys think of the Nintendo Direct as a whole? Kind of weird. Lots of DLC. Lots of Amiibo. Felt like kind of this like Nintendo going a route that you wouldn't have expected them to go sort of direct rather than what the directs were used to. I don't know. I th- I mean, we got a lot of stuff about Fire Emblem. There were lots of Xenoblade traditional and game and news, Steam, but and I thought there was a lot of like good stuff. There was a lot of good stuff, but there was a lot of uh, pay us more money stuff. You are certainly right that a lot of the good stuff was DLC, like Mewtwo, Lucas, Mario Kart. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for, you know, games like Smash and Mario Kart. For something like Street Pass or this new Animal Crossing game, it is pretty weird. It's, yeah, it's it's just everywhere now. It used to be when Nintendo did, when Nintendo did DLC, it was really simple. It was something really obvious like, oh yeah, we're going to double or almost double the amount of courses in uh, Mario Kart or something like that. Like, I don't know. That's I don't easy to understand. To that. I, I, I don't get the same vibe. Uh, it just feels like that it's a lot more piecemeal, a lot more pay for a little small thing DLC. I mean, that's, before that's it was the like way that really boost your content. That's the way that they've done it for a while, though. Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, New Super Mario Bros. Two, Pikmin Three, they all had sort of piecemeal uh, DLC, and those were the first games they did DLC with. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong that this direct was like a lot of piecemeal stuff, but I don't know that it's really i don't know that it's different from what they've done in the past i think it's just sort of weird that they're doing so much of it right now yeah it's it's pro- proliferated a lot more uh, and i think that's what's jarring i think you're right yeah. yeah there weren't really any big announcements that jumped out of this direct as like a you know huge event or anything but all of the the smash and mario kart dlc is pretty cool it's just nice to see them take these two really big important franchises and just support them for a long time after launch right Especially with free stuff. I'm I'm way more excited for 200cc mode than I should be. (laughs) Oh, me too. That was probably my favorite announcement today. Waiting for it online, especially. Mm, mm Mm-hmm. I remember, like, they were showing that trailer, and I was like, they're talking about 50cc 
100 cc and i was thinking are they doing 200 cc now yeah and i don't know and where i'm going with did. that but they did 200 cc <laughs> <laughs> Well, looks like that is all there is to cover. So everybody, thank you so much for listening. This is the Endo Nintendo Week for today. If you like this podcast, please subscribe either to Nintendo Week on iTunes or Gamnesia TV on YouTube. And please head to iTunes to leave us a review. It really helps with visibility, so we greatly appreciate it. Especially if you're listening all the way to the end um, and you you hear this message, we'd really appreciate it if you uh, leave us a review on iTunes. So if you can't wait till next week for more of our stuff, you can head to Gamnesia.com to see more gaming news as it happens. There's Sony, Microsoft, Indie, you name it and even plenty of Nintendo news that we didn't have the time to discuss on this week's show. If you have questions or feedback for Nintendo Week, please send it to colin at gamnesia.com. That's C-O-L-I-N at gamnesia.com. Thank you all so much for listening, and we hope you have another great week.